Hey there guys, Tools20 here, welcome back to Oceania. If you missed the last episode, we have started providing better services for our industrial zones and our commercial zones, which are absolutely lacking a lot of transportation options. At the moment, well, not anymore. Now we've got some ships which are providing some exporting options for our city, which is great. But before that, we just had our roads. So uh, this is great to start seeing some of these coming through. However, ships and roads are the only two options we have for cargo to get in and out of our city, in and out of our map. And that's really not good enough when we've also got a whole bunch of other options we can choose from. Well, let's do probably one of the better options and that is our train service. So today we are going to be providing, we're going to be connecting up our entire map. Yes, our entire map. We've already got Patterson, we've got our big city of Dundee, but we're gonna have a town down here, a town up there, and a little one over in this corner too. And each one of those towns is going to focus on some sort of industrial, um, well, some sort of industry. Uh, Patterson is primarily focused on agriculture. We've got a big chunk down there. Uh, down here, the town's gonna focus on forestry industry. Um, up here is going to be ore, and I haven't decided what this one's gonna be all about, but basically all this industry is gonna funnel into this one zone and that's where our port's going to sit, which means that having only roads getting down here is just not enough. So a train line is going to be absolutely vital and we have started a little bit of it, but there's a lot more to figure out. Because I'm trying to make this fairly realistic, I would also like my train line to be fairly realistic as well. So outside of the city and outside of the towns, I would like most of the rail to be just one-way tracks. Well, not one-way tracks, but single rail tracks. Which means using some of these lines, which is going to cause some problems, um, particularly interrupting some of our passenger services as well, which are going to operate between these towns. So I have subscribed to a mod. This is single train track UI, and this is going to allow the trains to stop at these uh, sections so that we only have one train that is going on this single rail line. So hopefully that's gonna fix that problem. I don't know, I haven't tested it yet. We're gonna test it out in today's build. But before we even work with it, uh, I need to connect up our ports to the rest of the train line. Uh, luckily it bypasses the city pretty well, but it does go directly well, I mean, we do have our Olympic Park directly in the way. So I reckon we're going to need to go underground for this to work. And I think the best option is just to flatten out this whole area. We'll keep it all pretty much the same elevation just because uh, train lines don't want to change elevation too drastically. And you know, even just looking at this space, I feel like this would be the perfect location for a pretty large scale freight yard. Uh, you know, we could have some sort of cargo terminal and, a, and multiple lines stretching through here. Uh, the reason why I'm thinking that would be a good location is because we're also gonna have a cargo terminal at our airport. So I think that would probably be a really good spot because it means that we could actually get freight in and out and it's far enough away from our main road here too. So. Uh, let's leave a bit of space for that. In fact, let's just give a little extra room. Uh, I reckon we'll turn that to an elevated road. And let's change a bit of this train line because it's a bit, it's a bit windy. And I don't think it needs to be that windy. So I'm just gonna drag out a couple of lines and we can make the road work around it. If anything, I think that this line's more important than the road layout at this stage, uh, because all that doesn't exactly need to stay there. But I think that this needed to be a little less curvy. I know I'm making some curves here, but... So all of that can be elevated, doesn't need to be in that exact area. And why don't we do a bit of a shape like this? Sort of follows the road, but also kind of does its own thing. Uh, actually, we can follow the road in an area like that. I don't think that this line needs to connect up like that. I mean, it is so close. I mean, what would be the purpose of this going to over here? So I'm probably just gonna leave it like that. Uh, also, I've subscribed to these massive ships and they just look so much more realistic, especially compared to the old ones and the port. I mean, they look awesome. Uh, so just slowly getting a bit of an idea of how the flow of these rails are going to look. 
Uh, let's get another one going out towards our airport so we don't forget. I want to keep it separate from this line and we'll do something, I don't know, I guess we can go straight through here. Um, that's not necessarily going to stay there, so who knows what we'll do with that one. But I reckon this line should probably follow the same road direction. We're leaving it on pause because we're on a deleting rampage. Deleted a bunch of industry and this access road and even our power is now disconnected from our wind turbine farm. So we're just gonna plan out some things before we press play again. Uh, there's some things we need to figure out. So we've got this power line which needs to connect back up to our wind turbines. So let's drag that out. No, that should be the last thing we do <laughs> because that's an easy one to drag out. Uh, let's do the elevation because, well, these elevated roads. Uh, I don't think there's any options for this tram line to be elevated, so I might have to switch to this one. Though I would really like to keep something like that because it does look super cool. That one's actually pretty nice, particularly because it is heading towards the airport. I mean, this road is going to see a lot of usage, so maybe even switching to the three lanes is probably the better option. I reckon this is a better shape. There was no need to follow this road layout. I think that is better for it to do its own thing. Plus it kind of breaks a bit of the grid up. Not that there is uh, much of a classic grid going on. And what I'm thinking as well is that the port and the airport, I think that, it, that they just completely bypass this massive cargo terminal that we're gonna have down here. Because, I mean, you're not gonna get a train that travels from there to this terminal. You know, that's a bit ridiculous. I think anything like that can just be transported via any sort of truck. And then, I mean, you could hand deliver something, you know, it is such a small distance. So I'm not gonna bother. I think uh, that'll then encourage trains to make a longer journey than a shorter one, particularly if we've got those long trains, which I am subscribed to. So that's gonna be uh, something just to consider. So now these are two lines that are bypassing there and likewise, I don't have them connected up to one another on purpose, uh, but I do have this one kind of stretching out here because I'm kind of thinking maybe we have something, I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, basically, I, you never know how big these airports are gonna get, hence the reason why I've got these highways just to give me a bit of an idea, but I mean, I still don't really have any idea how big that's gonna get. Speaking of which, I feel like this is also probably gonna get out of hand. a bit of perspective of what we're dealing with we've got two terminals down here we've got one built into the port and then we've got another one alongside this port so four within a pretty small area and then we're gonna have another one built into our airport so yeah a lot um, and I really wanted to I mean I kind of didn't want to but I also wanted to uh, really refine it into this one zone I know it's it's gonna be really, really tight, but it's interesting seeing a lot of these in real life, how they do branch out pretty quickly into all these different lines and all these different stations, but then they do dwindle down into just a little point very quickly. So I wanted to do something similar. Plus, if it's gonna be digging underground, uh, going into a tunnel, then they're only really gonna be using just the one tunnel and not gonna allow lots of tunnels going under the city. So. I have no idea how that's going to operate, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now I am absolutely dying to detail this up, but I'm going to save it for another episode. I just want to focus on the functionality before we start detailing. Uh, but before we move on to our tunnel, let's uh, let's connect this up because it's just sort of floating in its own little world. 
uh, and I think the only option we really have is to connect it to this road. I mean, that is just beautiful access. Um, I can't imagine uh, freight being delivered to these ports and then going straight to this terminal. Uh, you know, obviously there's some here, but I reckon some of it is going to get down here as well. So uh, this road here. So let's keep it elevated until we get to a certain point and then we'll drop it down into this zone. I'm trying to think, are we going to have suburbs? Are we going to have more industry? Is it just going to be wilderness? What are we going to do? I can't really figure it out. So any suggestions would be very much appreciated. But I think that this is the, I think this is how it's going to work. I think that vehicles is coming in and out from the one point makes more sense than if we were to have uh, like another exit. But we could also do that. I'm not really, really sure. Um, the only thing is, is if I connect it through here, then that's going to be the preferred option for vehicles but I don't think I want to see vehicles going that way all the time. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Uh, but for now, I think that kind of works and then we'll think about the rest of it. But we can now unpause the game because I have connected everything back up. We've got our power lines going back to our wind farm. We actually need to place down a little bit more sewage options. Uh, and I am just sort of placing this down as a bit of a placeholder just to think about, is this the best location for it? I mean, originally was, but now it sort of feels like we don't have a huge amount of space. I don't even like my plumbing work at the moment, it's so bad. Uh, but, I don't know, I think we might not have enough room in this area. I think this is getting crowded pretty quickly, and we haven't even built the airport. So, uh, let's just put a pin on that and come back to it. We've got to figure out this tunnel because it goes underneath our Olympic Stadium pretty easily. Underneath all these suburbs, but uh, this is getting a little bit tricky because... Because we've got this metro line where I kind of wanted to connect it up. So I might start at this end and then we can figure it out from here. Actually, I take that back. Check out this wall here. Let's dig into that one. Oh, it's already pretty messed up already. But look at this. This is a perfect area for us to tunnel in. We can have a little tunnel that goes underneath all of this. Man, look at all these people using the metro. What's going on here? These are just regular users. Man, that is great to see. I was worried people weren't using it. Uh, all right, let's uh, figure out this tunnel. Now, I know this is going to cause some problems, but I'm going to go single rail for this tunnel. And the reason why is looking at a lot of examples on Google Earth, it seems to be the case that whenever there is a tunnel for one of these cargo lines, there seems to be a single rail in use, which makes sense. I mean, you don't get a huge amount of usage with these cargo lines and uh, tunnels and tunnels are super expensive anyway. I think it's quite different when you've got a passenger service using these, but when it's cargo, I think you can get away with a uh, single rail. I mean, at least in reality. I don't know if that's going to be the case in City Skylines. We're just going to roll with it, see what happens. If it's terrible, we can change it. Let's leave it at that because I actually want to see this work before I uh, totally put in heaps of detail. Uh, plus, I have a feeling I'm going to have to change it back to a, uh, a two-lane two lane train line. <laughs> Something like that. Let's go through here while the... Actually, that's perfect because the highway is all underground up until that point. So then that works out pretty well, to be honest. And then let's connect those two bad boys together. And that's our line, so that's connected. But just something I want to put out there that we haven't done yet and I'm still trying to figure out what it's going to look like or whether or not we even bother doing it. I don't really know yet. Uh, we are only connected to that line there which heads out towards Patterson, but there is all through this side. So basically any tr uh, trains that are coming from this side of the map, where and how are we going to connect up that line? Or do we even bother doing it. I mean, I guess we've got this option around here. We could do some sort of tunnel that stretches, I don't know, like through here and connects up like that. I can't tell if it's going to be a problem down the track. I don't know. Should we just see what happens? You guys let me know.
The train line from Dundee to Patterson is probably going to be the busiest train line within Oceania. I mean, not only are the two places fairly large, but we're also going to be catering for the towns that are going to be feeding into this line. So whatever town we build out towards the outback and all the other ones in between this whole valley and everything around it is going to see quite a lot of traffic. And then this line is fairly old as well, so we're going to need to make some pretty decent upgrades to it. And Patterson already has a fair amount of industry, so we're going to have to make some considerations to make sure that this is working pretty well. I actually don't think we need to add any more cargo terminals to Patterson. We already got the two. Um, we've got one over here in this industrial area, and then we've also got this grain silo too. So that's probably all we really need. It's not exactly a big place. Something else to consider is we do have a passenger service out this way. Uh, most of the towns are going to have a passenger service, so we do need to just keep that in mind. Um, we don't want to totally overload the train line. Plus, it is a fairly old one, so I don't want to upgrade it too much. Otherwise, I don't know, I think it'll lose its charm. Man, a lot of rubbish piling up in Patterson. Let's just uh, leave it. <laughs> Worry about that another time. Uh, what I want to do is I want to follow this old train line and give it a couple of sections for trains to overtake one another. It would be great to put one here, but looking at it, it sort of feels like with these crossings, I don't know if we're going to have enough room. So I'm going to leave it. I guess maybe we're close enough to the town to not worry about it. You know what? This might be probably the best spot, at least the first best spot we can choose from. So let's make it fairly long. We've got a bit of space to play with. That's probably the longest we're going to see a train come through. And then all through here, I reckon we just leave it because going above this highway, I don't really want to upgrade it. And all along this ridge, yeah. I mean, let's give this maybe the straightest section we can find. We'll upgrade that. And then, you know what? Just coming down to this part, it goes back to double lines. So I reckon we just leave it. The question is, do we give Utterville a cargo terminal? I mean, there is a lot of agriculture out this way, probably would make a bit of sense. Uh, do we have enough room for one? I guess we technically do, but they're super noisy. It means that the entire town is going to suffer from that noise pollution. Uh, so maybe a little bit further out towards a power station. Oh, you know what? What about here? For a place that's not quite a town yet, I mean, it's just an industrial zone and that's about it. It is pretty bustling. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff going on down here, including trains making some deliveries, which is pretty awesome. So we have built two cargo terminals, one down here in our uh, future town. It's nothing yet. It's just this area. And then another one down in Utterville. And a lot of the cargo being delivered here is going straight to this forestry industry, but probably more of it is being exported. So we've got some forestry going on in there and having this so close to the town that we'll end up building and so close to the forest, I think is going to work out pretty well. 
Um, but I just wanted to show you that this line going along the bay area, well not really along the bay, along the ocean, is also going to be serving the passenger service. So we've got the passenger service which is still using their catenaries and then it crosses this river and then it's go, going to go to the town which will have a train station. Something interesting is just seeing how high up I made this area. I actually don't think that's very realistic which is why uh, we've got a bridge digging into the ground. So what I'm going to do, because I think that that's a more realistic landscape for an area like this. So I'm going to grab all these nodes and I'm going to drop it down to the same level as this site, which I think is probably a little bit, uh, a bit more typical for areas like this. And we'll grab these nodes and we'll just make our bridge look a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's going to work a lot better. You can see the height difference. So, you know, I obviously built this when I made the map and it's crazy to see how much my uh, idea of what this area is going to look like and even the height of this area was going to be because that's kind of crazy. And then, I mean, all up here I would like to build when we actually build this town, but I would like just to put down a temporary idea of where something's going to go. Um, but I do like that the landscape does get a little bit hillier out this way because this is a bit of a plateau up here so we will have a bit of a hillside that sort of uh, shows the difference in landscape so yeah i'm just going to leave it as that because we are going to come back here but up here let's set up something that is going to be a little bit more permanent let's do our road first and then we'll connect up our train line oh by the way i haven't explained what i was doing uh, so basically we've got our train line, I would like it to go through our town and then stretch all the way through this uh, area here. And then we actually have a uh, connection all ready to go to Patterson, which is going to be a pretty nice little uh, little connection to this town because you know I can imagine a bit of cargo is going to go in between the two and this will be the only train line going between unless you want to go all the way through Dundee. I'm happy for my roads to be quite windy, but the train line can't really do any sort of maneuvers quite like that. So it needs to be a little bit more direct with the way that that works. But of course, I mean, this is quite a windy area. We're going through a bit of wilderness. This is not gonna really be anything else besides this road and that train line going out here. We will place down some national parks, but that's about it. So let's find the train line. Let's start at Patterson. And already I think that that's too much of a bend for a train line, uh, particularly ones out this way. This is going to be a pretty long train that I predict seeing driving along here, crossing these sort of areas. Uh, and it's going to be all cargo. I don't think we're going to have any passenger service. And at this point, I'm not too concerned about trees and landscape because I plan to go back after I've already dragged out the network. We'll go back and fix up some areas that don't really make sense, make it nice and flat and make sure the trees aren't clipping into the train line as well. All of that's been pretty straightforward, but this is getting super bendy down this way and the elevation, it might not look like it, but it changes quite drastically. So I reckon this calls for a tunnel. I'm gonna just do a corner in there and I reckon we could probably just tunnel our way through to probably about that point. I'm gonna say from the town to the tunnel, we're gonna redo that whole area when we get to this town. But for now, I'm just gonna place out that and we'll just get back to it. But from this far on, I'm gonna say that this is gonna stay pretty much the same. But I do have to make a couple of adjustments because as you can see, trains don't like running into trees and they don't like climbing mountains quite like that. So we can make a few adjustments uh, just using move it and of course just by removing the trees. You know what? Let's just see what happens if I select all the nodes and then if I did, because I think that if we click this, it's either going to work really well or it's either going to be, whoa, that actually worked really well. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple of things we need to adjust. So basically I've just made it so that it's a gradual incline from this point to the tunnel, which is kind of nuts. That is pretty good. 
So obviously there's some areas that don't really work, but I think it's going to be easier to change the landscape than it is to change the train line. Uh, that kind of sounds crazy because you'd think that the train line would be easier to fix, but I think that that is a really nice incline up to that point and I don't really want to change it. So why don't we just change the landscape instead? I think that'd be a much easier solution. I don't know if these bridges are the right choice for this area, but I'm going to stick with them for now just because I sort of think that this is not the oldest train line. I reckon it's probably newer than these bridges are. And plus I do want to show that the bridges towards Patterson are of a different type of architecture and then the ones out this way are a little bit different, but that's fine. We're going to stick with them for now and I might download some extras a little later on. But that train line is now established. We've got a road that is connecting up the two places. I was going to say two towns, but we've got, we got nothing down here. Just to give you a bit of perspective, we have now established a train line from this place to Patterson, and then that extends all the way through this valley past Utterville, which is where the other terminal is. Other cargo terminal goes through Dundee and then to our port. And then we've got one from here that stretches all the way through. Uh, that's, I mean, in terms of a full scale train network, that's pretty well established. There is one more that I wanted to do. This is where we were before, but we're gonna head in a slightly different direction. This is just out towards the outback of Oceania. Uh, I didn't really plan to do a huge amount out here. I want to keep it fairly desolate and, you know, keep a lot of the natural environment pretty much intact. But we will have a train line that will connect up the town that we build here. I mean, this is going to be focusing primarily on ore export. We'll have a big ore mine. So a train line is going to be pretty important. But we don't really need to set up that train station at the moment because it's... Well, I mean, we got nothing out there, so we don't really need to do it, but I would like to drag out the train line just through this area, uh, probably doing something pretty similar to this road. I mean, this road is, I mean, it's just pretty straight and narrow and that's about it. I like, I really like just how desolate it is out here. So a train line, I think would be a nice addition. All right, we've established that line. It's probably gonna change in parts, but I reckon the sections that go through the desert, I'm happy with how that looks. Uh, and we will end up having some sort of junction here that will go towards that town so that we've got some ore industry being hooked up with the rest of the line. But I'm gonna follow the line now out towards this way. This is probably where I'm gonna start changing it up because all of this area I built quite a long time ago and I reckon it's due for a bit of a change, particularly when we start building over here. So that's why we've got, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a little bit messy in places, but that's fine. We're gonna change it in areas for sure. But now that we've established that train line, I reckon we need to go and check out Dundee and see if things are working all right, because that uh, single rail UI really needs to work, otherwise we're gonna have some problems. So let's, let's, let's get down to there, but let's follow the line from this terminal that we built before. Uh, so yeah, I have done a little bit of detail on it and you can see that a lot of vehicles are coming in. We actually got a lot of farming vehicles, which is exactly what I wanted. Probably come back and do a little bit more work on it, but for now that's, fine the way it is. Uh, so no trains at that stage, but following this along, this is all okay because it's all double lines. So that shouldn't have any dramas. So this is how long some of these trains can get. I'm pretty sure I've got some longer ones as well. I'm going to slow down the simulation so it's a bit smoother, but yeah, you can see that's a pretty long one. So uh, that's what a big concern of mine is going to be is just how long some of these trains are and whether or not they're gonna be able to get through all this area. We've got a pretty steady stream of vehicles coming in and out of this place. It is massively busy and I haven't seen any trains just yet. I don't know whether they're getting stuck somewhere or whether or not it's just uh, not a real need for them at the moment. We've got a train coming in, so this will be a bit of a test. I'm gonna follow him all the way to his destination. I haven't seen where he's going yet, so hopefully he is going to our port just so that we can really see how this operates. And if there's any snags along the way, I guess we can make some adjustments to the line. 
I guess the problem is going to be when we see more than one of these coming through, which I'm sure is going to be the case at some stage. Um, but for now, it's okay. We've, we do have this train here, so I don't know whether or not uh, these guys are going to get stuck or if it's going to be right. We'll just, we'll just see. Okay, so already I can see that this is going to be a bit of a problem. We, uh, I guess, technically for these trains, that is the faster route than going all along this way here, which I would prefer them to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, just because I think that... Hopefully that doesn't cause too many problems. Uh, hopefully what I'm, hopefully by doing that, we should see these vehicles or these trains go all the way through this way and completely bypass all of that because that's going to get really busy, particularly with these passenger services. So we'll just see if that changes anything and hopefully uh, these trains can also access the right platforms. He's going into his tunnel pretty easily and I think that that's going to be a bit of a success. So far so good, I'm going to say that's a complete win, he's made it all the way to that terminal and uh, let's just go and fly around and see if we can find any problems and fix them up. I think what's been really helpful is just by having these outside connections in these areas so that uh, any train that is leaving this facility which is outside of Dundee, then they actually don't have to go through Dundee which is an absolute plus. Watching this train come through the city, I would prefer it to not have to go through this station, particularly when we do have this line that is completely free. Uh, look, we've got two cargo trains going at the same time, uh, luckily uh, going in the same direction and not interfering. Uh, I'm just having a look. I don't know if I've given any trains an option yet, yeah, so I don't think they have any options to cross the line. So. I'm going to make a little connection here and hopefully that's going to encourage them to go this way but they will always choose the line that is uh, the fastest and just because I create a crossing here doesn't mean that's going to be the fastest option. So we'll just see, I've got that connection there and looks like we've got a bit of a hold up. Uh, it's okay for now, it's alright. We'll just see if uh, this guy will end up going through or whether it's just waiting for that train. I am pretty impressed. I have built cities. I've built a lot of cities and I've seen uh, the cities totally choke with trains much smaller than these guys. And there is something else I can do. So I've noticed that this guy is... Uh, he's left the facility at only 30%, so I can actually grab a mod. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, basically allows vehicles or it makes vehicles wait until they have a full load. Or you can set the lowest amount for them to leave that facility. So I'm going to do that so that we don't have any vehicles leaving that are uh, less than, I don't know, let's say like 70% or something. And then that should show us, well, that should allow for less vehicles to be used in these lines, which I think would be probably a lot better. Look, this guy's only using two. 10% field, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. Well, to my surprise, the traffic flow of those cargo trains coming in and out of the port is surprisingly doing totally fine on the single rail train line. So I'm going to call that a win and I'm just stoked to see these, uh, see the port being used and I'm looking forward to working further around this area, fleshing it out because it's looking a little bit strange at the moment. I read a uh, few comments of people saying I should start expanding out a few of these areas and I agree. I reckon it's time to do a bit of expansion. So that's what you can expect in the next episode. But for now guys, that is it. Guys, thank you all so much for watching this one. Hugely appreciated. I'm going to give a special thanks to the wonderful people over on Patreon supporting the channel. Trick Truddle. Alexander, Ben, and Barrack, Pendens, Driven NASA, Simon Ellison, Sherisville, Big 393, Kendrick BC, Grant Robertson, Daniel Bryant, Ryan, Roger Davies, James Barber, and Nick Dutton. Thank you guys so much for your support, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.